Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's Don't Regret It Use It gel plate mini series video. So far we've made three cards using prints we've pulled from our gel plates. We've done blending, splattering, stenciling and using embossing folders to create texture on our gel prints. Today we're going to be using stamps to create texture on our gel prints. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some picked raspberry distress oxide. I apologise for any background noise. There's a bit of building work going on in my neighbourhood. So I've got picked raspberry and I'm going to cover my gel plate in that. I'm not putting a load on, just enough to cover nicely the plate without too much beading up. And I'm going to roll the excess off on my scrap paper here, which will be used for something later. And now I've got this rubber stamp. It's got a nice repeating leafy pattern on it. And I'm going to add some Distress Oxide in Wilted Violet and use my brayer to spread that out nicely. And then I'm going to lay this on top of my picked raspberry. Try not to move it around, but give it a good press down. And lift it up carefully and hopefully you can see there's a little pattern on there. And now I'll take some paper, press that down, give it a good press and a few seconds to transfer the ink. And there we have a picked raspberry background with a purple leafy pattern on it. I'll just give this a bit of a wipe so that we get the ink off. Roll off that purple onto there and again add some picked raspberry and smooth it out like that. I'm going to take this stamp, hopefully it's all dry and there's no moisture left on it. Again, without re-inking this time, put it on, press it down, try not to shift it around, but give it a good press. And then you can lift that up and pick up the print. And now I've got a paper coloured stamped image. So you can ink your stamp and stamp it onto your gel plate and you'll get an impression. Or you can use a clean, dry, uninked stamp and lift the ink off your gel plate and get a sort of negative effect. Now, I've lost my train of thought because the food delivery has just arrived, so I had to go and sort that out. But hopefully I can pick up where I left off. So a bit more picked raspberry on there. Get the cat hair off the gel plate. And... I just wanted to show you that you don't have to use a rubber stamp for this. You can use photopolymer stamps or this is a silicon stamp. I think this was a freebie off the front of a magazine. And you can put that down, press it down, try not to let it shift. Pick it up and then pull your print and you get a lovely faint image where the stamp has lifted off the ink. Put some wilted violet on, not too much, so we can spread it out nice and thin and have it not too bubbly. And I'm going to lift the colour again. So next we're going to combine techniques by putting a stencil on top of the stamped image and then put a piece of paper on top. And as we've done before, just press it down, make sure to press really well in the holes in the stencil. And now we've got a background that's got some lovely crisp white crisscrosses and a stamped image in the background. We can take this off and use this too. So we've got the reverse of this now. There's ever such a faint bit of the stamped image in the empty areas, but the crisscross is purple with the stamped image on it. So this is our little crop from today's five minute gel plate session. 
we've got the bit I rollered my brayer on to clean it, we've got purple pattern stamped on a pink background, we've got the pattern where we lifted the pink ink off and it revealed the paper below, that was the rubber stamp and I did the same there with the silicon stamp and then this one was a combination of lifting the colour with a stamp and then pulling the print through a stencil. So plenty to play with today. A nice colour combination of pink and purple. Lots of texture, lots of pattern. Now let's make this into a card. So I'm thinking I'm going to use this bit here as a large banner and get that centralised and cut that out with my cuttle bug and that can go on this 5x7 card blank made from smooth white cardstock. And we'll pop it in the top left corner with an equal size gap along these two sides. Next I'm going to add, I think we'll go two sizes down and add something a bit more solid and take it from the pink area. So I'm thinking this here and that's a nice bit of contrast between the purple and the pink and the more solid pattern compared to the lattice with the lighter airy pattern in the background. Because I don't want to cover up all my lovely background, I want to have them a bit staggered. And I think we'll go a nice light pink. Again, for a bit of variation, we're going from quite a dark solid to a light airy pink. For my focal point I'm going to use a gold butterfly that I cut with this die and I've also cut one from vellum so that I can layer them one on top of the other and I've cut a body from white card using the butterfly body die, the smaller one that I've got. Before I stick it all together though I want to chop off these things that I think are meant to look like antenna because the body has antenna already. I add some glue here not too much so I can stick that to the vellum slightly offset so that the vellum is peeking out from behind the gold and now some to the back of the butterfly body and I'm thinking this can go on here like this and I want a sentiment that I can tuck around my butterfly so I'm thinking I'm going to use this die it's a celebrate and it's a lovely bouncy scripty font. I'm going to cut it out of card that I'm going to colour with wilted violet because that will bring this purple forwards a little bit, which I think we need. And I do think it needs its shadow in white to help the celebrate stand out. To add glue to the back, I'm just going to use this sponge dauber, pick up a little bit of glue on it and press it down like that. To try not to shift it around so that I don't get glue on the inked side. To add some dimension to my card I've added foam tape to the back of this die cut and I'm going to pop it about there to give our butterfly some room and also to let this little corner peek out here so that the banner makes sense. I put glue on the back of the body of the butterfly and I'm going to slot it in here so that it's connected to the sentiment and you can still see all the little bits of banner poking out. And because this is quite a big area, I'm going to use this circle die to cut some little circles from gold, gold foil, not gold foil, whatever that is. And it's got some bigger circles in it, which I think will work well with the sort of size of everything there. So that's plenty of circles now. As a general rule, when I'm doing something like this, I like to place the biggest elements first, the big circles. And then I will work my way down the sizes to make it all look attractive. Thank you. 
and for a bit of gloss and dimension on my butterfly's body I'm adding Morning Dew Nouveau Drops. These will dry clear, so the butterfly's body will remain white. Right, that'll do, I think. I'm gonna disappear quickly because the building noise is starting to ramp up. I hope I've been able to edit most of it out for you. But there we go, one card made with gel prints that I made with stamps and stencils. I hope you found that helpful, and I hope to see you back here for the next video. Thanks for watching, bye for now.